Welcome back, everyone, to more 999. And once again, we're beginning with memories. So we've gotten three endings, a sub, the axe, and the safe. Time to go to, uh, well, from what people have said, it, correct me if I'm wrong, that there is another single ending and then the true ending ends up being two at once. That's what some people have, have told me, which would mean there's two more playthroughs. I would want, I, like I said before, I do want to get all of the endings. So, if you happen to know what what are the paths, I do want to see the ending that is not the true ending, because I do want to get all of them. So you don't have to, you know, make it obvious as you're talking about what we need to do, but you know, maybe some some hints as you've been doing as to what might be the best path to take. And once again, the not Titanic uh, explodes. Which ending is my favorite so far? The axe ending. Clover going nuts and murdering everyone, especially Jumpy, uh, I thought was the best ending so far. The axe ending was very revealing. We did get a lot of story and explained a, a, a bunch of things that we did not learn in other endings, true. But I thought the axe ending was the most satisfying. I mean, the... The safe ending did not even have Jumpy being being murdered explicitly. And that is one thing that the two other endings have over the safe ending. The uh, sub ending had Jumpy being killed. The axe ending had Jumpy being killed. Uh, safe ending didn't have that, you know? And it was, that was a real problem with that ending, I think. Alright, so we need to get blue key. Let's see. And then go to the mirror, right? To get red key and activate the flashback. As item picking up items will do in 999. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I kind of find it hilarious that he, op he o enters his apartment and the one thing he notices is there's fresh air in here. How odd! That's very different from how my apartment usually is. Blue briefcase, okay. Oh no, I have the red, red key selected. There we go. Alright, so uh, what were the numbers for the blue briefcase? If ever, and if anyone happens to have that on hand, 0263. Because I probably should prepare this before the streams. Would be a good idea, so I don't have to assume that someone else will have it. Yes, I should write them down. Alright, digital root. There's Jumpy carefully studies the file as the room fills up with water. I think we want to go over here, right? Red key. Uh, I'm not... Bobby the Rookie, I'm not saying that the last ending was bad. I mean, yeah, it was, it was good. There was good stuff about that. I'm just saying, Jumpy didn't die. Or at least we don't see him die. Who knows what happens after he yells for Canny at the end. But I need Jumpy Death. Okay. Time to solve Zero's insidious device with, or with our key cards. Right, digital root. And what was it? One, six, seven? Yeah. Well, 
Would my last end would the last ending be my favorite if Jumpy burned up in the incinerator? It would have been my favorite ending if Jumpy burned up in the incinerator. Look, I'm not saying that I'm going to be disappointed if Jumpy doesn't die in the remainder of the endings. I mean, I know that as we go to towards the true ending, it's most likely that Jumpy will be more of a hero character and, and figure things out rather than die horribly, not knowing what's going on. I'm aware of that, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting Jumpy to, to die in all the endings. I'm just saying that the endings where Jumpy died are my favorites. You know, if Grace was here, she would have she would solve this so fast. She would pick Jumpy up and throw him at people. Cause remember, Grace's specialty is she's able to get through doors very quickly, and that would come in very handy in the nonary game. She would find a way. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the guests are scenesters, and I guess that would make Zero a ninja? I guess that's how that works. Zerp, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mis mispronounce his name. Zerp is quite a ninja. I mean, so far, he's gone unseen throughout this entire game. I mean, in the last ending, apparently he was right there in the same room with Jumpy, and he didn't see him or her, whichever Zero might be. That would be pretty neat if this time around the ninth man uh, didn't do this because he realized it wouldn't work. He's not entirely sure why he knows that. But like, eh, you know, somehow I have a feeling that, that doing this is just going to result in me blowing up. But no, once again he goes through door 5 and blows up. Yeah, ru run Lola run. Where she keeps doing the same thing, but is aware of things she did previously. Yeah, I don't know why he doesn't say the name of the person who lied to him. I mean, I guess even if he did, we wouldn't know, right? Because we don't find out what Ace's real name is for a while. And we haven't come up with... Uh, no, actually, yeah. We did come up with the code names before he dies. Would he yell out Ace's code name or his actual name, though? Um, we've, you know, we've tried the real answer every time. Let's try a fake answer and get called an idiot. Oh, no. Jumpy uh, corrects himself. You know, I'm just hoping that the true ending is actually all of the characters killing Jumpy in some particular way. I have not been looking up spoilers, but, I mean, it, it, it's pretty easy to guess that, uh, it was pretty easy to guess that Zerp was, um, was the ninth man the whole time, that the ninth man fakes his death, or rather, no, the ninth man dies, but it's his ghost who 
when he dies, he becomes m more powerful than you could possibly imagine, and his ghost, his force ghost, uh, too, let's say that. His force ghost possesses the, f the computers in the fake Titanic. No way, it was his plan to die so his force ghost could possess the, the database that contains the entirety of human memories and experiences, uh, the database that our brains have a wireless connection to. That's his goal, because that's where all the power is. Oh, wait, did I? Ah, I pressed it. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Damn it. I, I think I choose door four. I, I probably should have paid more attention to that. Is door four okay? Four is fine? Good. Okay, so when I go on... When I go on tangents like that, I should probably pay attention to if an important choice is, go is gonna come up. Fortunately, that did not... Uh cause a problem this time. Oh, we never need door 5 again. Okay. Oh, so that means that in this playthrough and the, the last playthrough, we get to go with Team June, Lotus, and Santa. Isn't, isn't that great? That's right, we'll never see the casino again. Man, this group is getting so good at getting to those deads. They did that in record time. Oh, that's true. We get to find out about Ice-9 again, don't we? And the Funyurinpa. Alright, so uh, let's see. This puzzle... Oh, that, yeah, that, there's that door that I that I missed the first time we were through this. All right, yes, the other one that has the hole in it. Then book of matches, well, box of matches, more like. Oh, did that activate a cutscene? Looks like it did. <sighs> yeah, June. I guess I am. I guess I'm worried about you. Because I, I wasn't worried last time, so I guess I am now. Oh, Ice-9 talk is optional if I'm not going for the true ending, so I guess this time we get to skip learning about Ice-9. Alright. Uh, let's see... Was there some... Oh, yeah, the map. I think we take the map... And that activates a cutscene. Whoops. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, why not? I didn't actually mean to do that, but okay. N no harm in saving. Yeah, I think this was the first time that we took an item. It's a replica of the Titanic? Maybe. I think this was the first time we took an item and we got a lengthy tangent after it in the first playthrough. Man, those crazy Titanic fans just on the internet, on their Titanic forums, talk talking about building a replica of the Titanic. We don't need, you know, engineers to build a massive steamship like that. I've studied the Titanic. I, I know how to do this. Sure, why not? The Mummy's Curse. Definitely. June, you don't know how much I believe in that. Tell me everything you know about curses. Yeah, tell me more. I want to know all about that. That's right. Refresh my memory about that whole Egyptian mummy curse. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it did. Hmm, you don't say. 
Mm-hmm. That's right. That's that's the only way it could have happened. Jumpy, think of it. It's the only thing that makes sense. Well, that's not much of a mummy, you know? Mummies are supposed to be like, you know, big zombies with with bandages. I mean, if you're if you just look normal, that that seems to be a waste of a mummy. Jumpy, you don't understand. I've studied this. She was frozen in water that in ice that didn't melt. Obviously, it was ice nine. The water in her body turned to ice nine. Jumpy's mind wandered. He couldn't believe how insane Akane was since he since they last met. That incident with the rabbits apparently hit her really hard. And now we have a map. And a key. The dresser key. Let's see. Uh, let's try heading into the... Oh, wait, that vase? No, we don't need that vase. Oh, wait. And this picture? That's right, we know what that is. That is crystal clear. A horse with a mohawk. Okay. And, yeah, we need to find the tiles... That'll allow us to assemble that picture. And let's see, we need to close this, right? Oh wait, no, we need to find the shower curtain to begin with, that's right. Yes, Jumpy, I listen to Art Bell all the time. Let me tell you what he has to say about the Titanic being sunk by the curse of the mummy. That room's pretty dark. Oh wait, do I have to, uh... Let's see. Uh, let's see. Do I assemble? Do I combine this with matches? Yeah, there we go. Alright. Open that up. No, it's locked. And so let's use this. And that's one plate of the horse with a mohawk. Don't know if there's anything else. Oh, okay. So... Maybe we should... Oh, okay. There's the shower curtain. There it is. Boom. Now we we can't do anything in this room with the when the candle's gone out. All right, look at the candlestick. Look at it, Santa. Oh, that's right. We had to take that. The candlestick was actually a key. That's Zerp. He's one step ahead of us all the time. And Santa was real pumped about opening this and getting that. Oh, wait, this is where he gives us the, uh, yeah, that. Because he has a real problem. He hates clovers, Jumpy. He hates them! Uh, should we take it or not take it? We took it last time. 
Do we uh do we insist that Santa has to hold on with the very thing that he hates the most in this world? Don't okay. You have to keep that Santa. <laughs> Jumpy uh is a little bit insecure. Apparently. Please don't, Santa. They're giving us another opportunity to take the bookmark. Obviously, this is extremely important. But we'll say, you know, Santa, you hate it so much, I think you have to keep it. Actually, that was close. The second option is take it this time. The game's switching it up on me. From the other room, we can hear Lotus say, What do you mean you're, you hate clovers? That's dumb. <laughs> oh, Santa, ever the charmer. Wow, that's some kind of combo. That was a lot of sounds, actually. Okay, so we have one of the plates. We refused the clover bookmark from Santa, and Santa apparently got, uh... got wind kicked by Lotus, I guess? That's what that sounded like. And was there anything else? I guess not. Alright, we want to go in, in here. And use the curtain. Get that curtain on there. Jumpy knows what's important. Okay, and so that's where the hole is, and that's where the tile on the door is. Okay, let's go through there. Let's go back into that other. I can't leave June in there on her own. Who, who knows what she? I, I, yeah, I don't know why we can't leave June in there on her own. Got it. Okay, so now let's head back in here. No, we actually don't care about Lotus and Santa at all. What we care about is this. Okay. So, okay, yeah, I know where that goes. That's the head. I just have to identify... Okay, that's the... Oh, that's it. Now they're going to try to tell us that it's a dog or something? Some nonsense like that? We know the truth. We know what that's a picture of. Oh wait, is this the convers- Yep, yeah, there, there we go. This is the conversation where we go get into global telepathy. What does it look like? We already chose Fun Yurinpa. Do we really have to choose it again? That does not look anything like a dog, honestly. Do we want to get... Okay, do you want to give the supposed right answer? Okay. Jumpy lovingly caressed the contours of the picture. Feeling the texture with his fingertips. Can't you see? It's it's obviously a dog. <laughs> Jumpy! Not bad! I am clearly impressed with your ability to identify that as a dog. What? I don't... How, how did you... How could you have possibly have... Cracked that, that brain buster?
Okay, so this is old stuff now. I mean, Lotus really shouldn't be impressed. It's like you said. Jumpy knew because his brain was able to access the part of the universal database of human memories and experiences that said that it was a dog. So it was quite clear to him what it was. That shouldn't be impressive at all, you know? I have this key. And once again, we found it. And if I remember right, I think the kitchen is the next puzzle. Next, yeah, there we go. We're in the kitchen already. And this is where we find out about hexadecimal, right? And get trapped in the freezer, where Lotus does not do a damn thing to help us. Alright. Alright, this was the note that, uh... Alright, now that... Uh... Right, and we don't know what to do with that. That's a locked door. Alright, that's where we came in. Okay, I didn't see this door for a while in the first time. But if we go in, we get, uh, get the knife. And then June brings up the Titanic again. Uh, last time we said that yes, we did. This time, no, June. I am fascinated with everything you might have to say about the Titanic. Just c say whatever comes to mind. I was surprised to find that Futility is actually a real book. I figured they probably just made that up. So, uh, when Jumpy was talking about Titanic fanatics that might be such big fans to rebuild the Titanic, uh, is June one of them? Because it seems like she's one of them. I like to imagine as she's saying this, she has a, a wild-eyed stare and is clutching at Jumpy's shirt. Well, yeah, I mean, that really doesn't predict anything, you know? Yeah, I knew you'd say that, Jumpy, because that's what everyone says. People without vision, Jumpy. People who can't look between the lines and connect the dots. Oh, wait, we already saw this? Okay. Wait, no. Now I now we didn't see that. Okay, so maybe it's old and new text being combined. Hypothetically, let's let's say that anything of what you're talking about has any basis in reality, June. Okay, I guess we did see this. What it all adds up to is that we have a knife, which after having conversations with June, it's probably a good thing that we have it because we begin to suspect that we might need to use it to defend ourselves at some point. As time goes on, June will become increasingly insistent that we accept these stories about the Titanic. She'll become increasingly angry when we tell her that we don't think any of it's true. Okay, this is how we got into the freezer. It's 
right. Lotus insisting. Yeah. That should not come in. And then the door closes. And ice freezes over the doorknob. And what do we do? Okay. Let's open that up. Get the meat. And if we remember, the meat is really hard. Did you forget about that? Because the game's about to remind us. Oh, I guess we have to search it for the game to tell us about how hard the meat is. And then there was rope. It's always handy to have rope around. And the bottle, yeah. That's right. And then there's dry ice somewhere. Was it in here? Where was that dry ice? There's the dry ice. Yeah, combine the rope with June's neck. Let's see. And we needed to use the hard meat with the dry ice, correct? To break it? Yeah, that's what we needed to do. But how, how am I supposed to know to do that if the game does not bash me over the head with a terrible joke about how hard the meat is? Let me combine that and that. And then we have the... Yeah, we have that. Do we need to combine that with the rope? <laughs> yeah. I like how he says that. I'm just gonna tie a rope on this. I'm, I'm not sure why. And now story. And... Let's see... Okay, yeah, so you're saying that we can skip this conversation? That we can tell Santa and June that we want to get out here, get out of here right now, and we are not interested in this Ice Nine nonsense? Okay, so we can skip it. Okay, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Jumpy, s snapping at these two. Actually, Jumpy, I think we do have time for this crap. But Jumpy, I, I need to explain to you how what the, how that relates to the sinking of the Titanic, because it's all connected. You know, I was wondering the same thing at this exact moment. See, Santa, he wants to know. Then Lotus yells through the door, Yeah, that is weird. Why is that? <laughs> Jumpy with the verbal smackdown, letting him know... Oh, come on, June. Stop talking about it. <laughs> June, what did we just say? <laughs> okay, uh, is this interesting or does it not matter? Is this what is this like the uh, the bookmark choice where they they're giving us another option to find out about Ice Nine if we said we didn't want to, so we can say it doesn't matter. <laughs> that was strange, but no, wait, we're freezing to death. <laughs> June, I'm gonna pretend you didn't say anything. <laughs> Okay, so let's see, where do we put this? Okay, yeah, just like that. Then we threw a chunk of ice at the bomb, hid in the trap door, exploded, destroyed the ice, and we got out. And then Santa burned himself, I guess, or something, and uh, Lotus was real bored.
Hmm? Is this new dialogue? Ah, uh, it is. I did not pick up the pork, did I? That's right, I didn't. Last time, well, the first time we played through it, I found this myself. <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of suspicious, Jumpy. I have a bad feeling about this frozen meat. I thought you should carry it. Just shove it in your pocket. Uh, let's see, where's the oven? Okay, let's cook the meat. Cook it up. And then that didn't work. So we had... Let's see. We have the knife. Um, where was the whetstone? Was it in in the kitchen? I think. Hmm, now it's telling me there's nothing there. Where did we find that thing? By the sink? No, no, I didn't want to click on that. Hmm. Well, here's the sink. I don't I see anything anywhere. Oh, okay, I have to look in the sink. Okay, okay. Combine that with knife. Alright, and now, no one's gonna mess with Jumpy. Let's cut that thing. I got the paper. The pork note. That's right, and the first time we did this, that looked like a minus sign. Except we found out it was a plus sign, making it C plus 10 plus... Yeah, this is plus, right? Yeah, plus F. Corporate finance, exactly what it stands for. We need to go to here, right? Okay. So, was it C plus 10 plus F? C was 12? F was 15? Oh, the answer is 43? Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. And inside is the Saturn keycard. And with that, we can leave. I don't think we could have entered the the 43 before actually getting the paper. I think it doesn't even let you put anything in. Okay, so I think next up is we get into that big hospital room and meet up with the rest of the group. Next is door eight, so we re so we're, we're gonna need to pick door eight next time. Yep, try all these doors, rapid fire, none of them open, and then the reds are broken. Oh, seven or eight is fine. Okay, we have to find the pieces of the red because Zerp took the parts out for some reason. That's never actually been explained as to why someone did that. Let me find out about the Gigantic, another sister ship of the Titanic. Let us tell our friends about our theory about Titanic fans building a new Titanic, and that's probably, that's almost certainly what's, what's happened. I can skip the search for Snake by going back to hospital room. All right. Do I get that option right away? Let's see. Mm. 
Okay, reds are fixed, I guess. And no one knows why. Where's Snake? I don't know where Snake is. Someone's gonna have to stay behind because we don't have enough numbers. And Ace volunteers and drugs himself for some reason. Even though he couldn't have... Oh yeah, back to the large hospital room. Even though Ace couldn't have known that they were gonna come back, right? That part I'm still unsure about. Because Ace obviously wants to get out. He obviously wants to survive, and will do so at the expense of other people. So how does he know that he'll still get the opportunity to, to survive if he stays behind? Hmm. Ace was the ringleader of the last nonary game, but does that mean that the last nonary game also took place on a Titanic replica? Because it seems like that would be the only way he would be sure that people would be coming back to this room. Yeah, and who was Guy X? They just introduced a new character, someone who, who took Snake's clothes and was dressed like him. To be there for Ace to kill. We don't, we don't even have a name. It's just called Guy X. And for that matter, who's the captain? The guy with the zero bracelet. We still don't know what that's about. Okay, here we go. Choosing doors. Um, how did this go? Door 8 was Science Boy, right? What was, what was door 7? Well, so far, most people want 8. Because I guess you want to see Science Boy again. Alright, so you're saying 8? Okay. Door 8 we go. And June's all, But Jumpy, if we split up, I won't be able to tell you about how the Titanic sank. And Jumpy's all, It's um, a shame. But sacrifices must be made. There's nothing we can do about it, June. You, we have to be strong for each other. And Clover's going to get trapped on the other side of that. There we go. All right, let's see, how did this go? First, the stuff that we can see on this side. Yep, there's red lights, we gotta turn them green and we don't know how. And then over here, we can't do anything with the levers. We, is there anything on there? A lot of stuff there. That's right, we get the power cable from that. And we can open this. And get the ethanol. And let's see, can we use the power cable? No, that we need the adapter, that's right. Uh, let's talk to... Can we talk to Clover? Let's talk to Clover. We're trying. Trying to do something. Can I look through that? Yeah, there we go. Let's tell Clover to pick stuff up. Alright, yep, okay. She found the adapter. Let's take that. Combine that with the power cable. And we have it. And now we get to see the best cutscene. As Lotus demonstrates her super ha elite hacker skills as she programs something on the fly on a monitor that's not actually connected to a computer. And where we find out about the database that contains all human memories. Whoops, how did that happen? No, oh, don't want the map. Oh, is this new dialogue? Whoa, 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 Lotus. 
you're going to have to be way more into Titanic conspiracy theories for Jumpy to be interested in you, Lotus. I'm a man! <laughs> yeah, this is new. I don't know why we're getting new dialogue this time. Alright, I guess we have to find something else before Lotus can uh, can program what she needs. Oh yeah, there was a password on the table, that's right. Alright, so I guess we got new content this time. We got a new scene. Because we, uh, we did this before giving Clover the ethanol. Did she do it without the password? And there's that. Okay, she cracked the password. Okay. Okay, so, did we actually skip that entire cutscene where Lotus talks to us about the, uh, the global human database? This fourth touch was my end. How did this go? Let's see. There we go. And then we can open this. And got get the activation key. Okay. And is this new dialogue from Clover? That was very fruit, uh, fruitful dialogue. Alright. I forget what she said there last time, but I guess that dialogue was new. And we have activation key, which means we can put it in the activation lock. Yeah. I wish my monitor made a sound like that when it turned on. Uh, let's see. Was there any... What, what could we do? Did we have to pull these levers? Apparently, that doesn't do anything. All right, so I guess let's uh, let's talk the clover. Okay, then she can do anything something with that. Nope. No, nothing happening. All right, max voltage. I forgot about that. Turn it all the way up. That's right. We kill science boy, activating a fire, revealing that Zero's puzzle was actually that he wanted us to uh, start a fire. Alright, so I guess we don't actually need the ethanol to solve this room. I guess we just need it to start that cutscene where uh, Lotus talks to us while she is programming a program on the monitor that's not connected to a computer. Door 6 this time? We meet up with the others. Which means we're going to be going back to the hospital room, and Ace is there. Snake is still not there. Clover is very upset. Oh, is this new?
Was door six the torture room? I can't remember now. Torture room was... Oh, six was crates. Oh, thank you. Yes, that is the best room, right? It's the most exciting room of the whole game. Unlocking doors, heading on out. Then we insult Santa's intelligence. Then we split into teams. And June is probably afraid of the elevator only going down because the other option is just really dumb. We find door six. So we're going to have to go back, tell people what we found. It's hard to say how... It's hard to say anything about Jumpy's intellect. Because he doesn't seem very bright throughout the game, but then he has that one scene with Ace where he's all... He, he turns into Columbo, and he's basically, now I'm a super detective, and I figured you out, Ace. He fell right into my mind trap. And it's like, what? Jumpy? I was outsmarted by... I keep doing that. I was outsmarted by Jumpy? And then we speculate about how Snake died. Of course you're still on the ship with us. I mean, we we know that from the um, from the last ending. Zero was right there. He said something to Jumpy, even though we didn't actually. Sorry, Zerp. A lot of typos. They keep mis misspelling Zero's Zerp's name. Zerp was right there, uh, even though we didn't see Zerp. We heard the voice though, and the game did identify it as being Zerp's voice. Okay, alright, and then we draw lots, where Jumpy manipulates everyone else, and then fight between Lotus and Seven, yeah, that, that's something that happened, I remember. Alright, that's weird, I wonder why door two is highlighted, like we haven't done that. We've done everything, so we've done all these floors, these things, right? Okay, so you're saying door six, we have to go back with the crates and the warehouse, and the most exciting part of the game. Okay, I didn't choose, I never chose door two, I, f okay, we were forced into door two, uh, on another playthrough, okay. And here we are in in the uh, the boiler room. Oh right, June's fever. I forgot that kind of comes up at this point. Okay, here's this again. Let's. Can I? Oh, I can't actually see that. There's that. I can't. No, I guess maybe that's not nothing there to pick up yet. All right. We can't actually take the things from the gears yet. There's that. We're going to want to come back here. Once we get the coal. Okay, so... Now, we don't need to go up those stairs yet, right? Oh, I know. These are the stairs that we have to go up once we get the, uh, the discs. I don't think we have to go up there yet. Because I think the first time I went through this, I didn't actually find those stairs until I already had everything. Okay, so now we're back up here. Uh, 
And then there's there's doors and stuff up here. Then we find out there's another side to this giant cargo room. Isn't that a thrill? Oh, there we go. I need to get that. First time through, it was a while before I found that wheel. Okay, heading back on through. Now I have to find that... Okay, yeah, there it is. Put the wheel on there. Okay, uh, crate is on the floor. June is still fevering. And oh, is this new dialogue? Why are we getting new dialogue in this room? Well, I don't know. Back through there. And then through A to get to these stairs. And then. Okay, there that is now. We can pick up the control panel for, for something. I don't know, it's something. Use it in here. Okay. Then coal. Did I? Okay, I, hey, that's right, there's a box, yeah. Just gonna pick up that box, head over to here, use that box. Oh yeah, that's the cause of of uh, June's fever. Her brain is overheating because she's she hasn't been able to talk with Jumpy about conspiracy theories for a while. Uh, let's see. We have no items left. What did we do? Oh, yeah, there was a control panel. Uh, get to those stairs again. Those turn. And the only thing that does is it exposes these discs. Take these discs. Okay. Now... Where is that? Okay, those stairs up to this thing. Right there. And let's see, we had to match up the reds, right? And there we go. Okay, much faster than the first time. And then June's feeling fine. Except we know that she's probably delirious with fever or something. Oh, this is new dialogue. Tell us about the two Santa Clauses, Santa. Yes, I, I think that there were two Santa Claus movies starring Tim Allen, brilliant comedic actor, legend of our time. Black Santa. He gives presents to the evil kids. No, he, he, he plays tricks on them. Shouldn't Black Santa, if he is if he is the dark Santa, the evil Santa, shouldn't he be rewarding? <laughs> White Santa killed Black Santa, huh? And that's how they turned red. That is... N that you made that up, Santa. There is nothing about that that you heard from someone else. You're just, you're just making that up as you go. It 
it's a, it's a constant struggle in Santa between the white and the black Santa. He's kind of like Mono Bear, except Santa. I just wanted to tell you about that. After, now that we've solved this puzzle and all. <laughs> don't, don't accuse us of wasting time, Santa. You're the one who just told us about the fighting opposite Santas within your soul. <laughs> 